Valentine's Day. Millions of Americans are spending billions of dollars on flowers. People across the country remembering or forgetting to pick up a bouquet of roses for their loved ones. Alvaro Camacho is sending 130 million flowers this Valentine's Day, but his loved ones won't be receiving any. No, no regalo flores. <laughs> if you're buying flowers for somebody this Valentine's Day, there's a good chance Alvaro had a hand in getting them to you. As logistics manager for Colombia's largest privately owned flower farm, he is responsible for dispatching 130 million flowers in just two weeks. Almost all of these are destined for the United States. How does something so fragile make it so far? The story of how this bouquet of roses traveled 4,000 kilometers from Bogota to New York is, in a nutshell, the story of globalization. It all begins with John Velasco, who has dedicated his life to growing the perfect rose. Toda la vida lo he trabajado en rosas. Ese ha sido mi cultivo y es una fascinación por la rosa. Ella es muy expresiva. Si no le gusta una fertilización, lo muestra. Si una persona no tiene una buena energía, la mata se, se, se molesta. At about one and a half miles above sea level, a cool 57 degrees Fahrenheit, and with 12 hours of daylight every day of the year, the Bogota savanna is the perfect place to grow flowers. But even with such reliable conditions, the slightest fluctuation in weather could result in the roses not blooming in time for Valentine's Day. Esta es una flor que muy posiblemente en dos horas ya esté para corte. Ah, que si yo me puedo llevar flores, no, porque igual uno en un banco, a pesar de ser el cajero, no lleva los billetes. Mi señora me dice lo mismo, ¿por qué no me trae flores? Lo ideal es cortar la flor y que el proceso de aquí a post cosecha sea lo, lo más corto posible. En la entrada de la post cosecha se le hace una desinfección. De ahí entran unos cuartos fríos donde se le baja el metabolismo para que ella deje de envejecer. Once they're out of the fridge, the roses are measured, stripped of their thorns, and packaged up for delivery around the world. The run-up to Valentine's Day means long shifts and hard work for the staff here. During this period, Elite Flower employs a full-time DJ to keep up morale. Se pensó en ponerle música a la gente para ver si se motiva más. Hay un poco de notas, eh, por ejemplo, a mí me piden canciones. Un saludo muy especial para los, los compañeros. Así lo vieron dos declaraciones de amor. <laughs> In the early 90s, the U.S. eliminated import tariffs on Colombian flowers in an effort to reduce the cultivation of drug crops and boost legitimate exports. And it worked. The Colombian flower industry employs 130,000 people and exports around $1.3 billion worth of flowers. One of the ironies of the consequent boom in air freight from Bogota to Miami is that flower shipments became a popular target for drug traffickers. It is Colonel Seas's job to make sure that none of it gets through. La misión de nosotros es una lucha frontal para tratar de impedir el tráfico de drogas hacia el exterior. Ese es un proceso muy importante, eh, teniendo en cuenta la cantidad de flores que salen al año y en periodos específicos como la, la fecha de San Valentín. ¿Usted regala flores o es como, como de trabajo? <laughs> no, no, sí toca, es un buen detalle y toca hacerlo a sus seres queridos. Y aquí hace un frío. Las cajas de veces las contaminan aquí, en el fondo, entre el mismo cartón o en estas divisiones. Entonces, por eso nosotros verificamos, hacemos una apertura para verificar que realmente no tenga nada entre las paredes, ni siquiera entre las mismas capas de cartón. Revisando que no lo hayan contaminado el interior con, con clorhidrato de cocaína en forma líquida. Muy bonito se la arreglo, ¿sí? O sea, todo esto ha sido un, un proceso de, de aprendizaje. Se les cubre una modalidad, lo cambian y así. 
se va en aeronave y ya. Digamos que hasta ahí es nuestra competencia. Miami International Airport is America's flower hub. 90% of all flowers imported to the U.S. come through this airport. That's a billion dollars worth of flowers every year. Around uh, Valentine's season, there's approximately about 30 cargo airplanes coming in every day, bringing uh, flowers and, and roses for, uh, for Valentine's. Everybody, all of this, they're all coming in from Bogota. Everything. This one too. Jaime Suarez oversees air cargo coming in from Latin America for Atlas Air. This is one of his busiest times of the year. In the weeks leading up to Valentine's Day, he works seven days a week to make sure these roses get to where they need to go. So aircraft, so aircraft arrives and everything uh, needs to be offloaded and then transported into the call rooms. It's, uh, it's a global world now. With the advances in technology and transportation, of course, we can reach everywhere and bring whatever we need into the U.S. So in this case, fresh cut flowers are the celebration for Valentine's Day, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're part of a big chain of transportation or, or globalization. Before the flowers can be cleared to enter the U.S., they are inspected by officers from Customs and Border Protection. They keep a watchful eye for insects and parasites that might have come along for the ride. A sample of flowers are turned upside down, and as one officer put it, they are spanked to see if anything falls out. During this time of the year, our agriculture specialists inspect around 6,000 units or samples. That is the same or equivalent to 700 million flowers. If insects are found, they are taken to a lab for analysis to see what kind of threat they pose to American agriculture. Put your alcohol. Mm -hmm. While the exporting of flowers creates over 100,000 jobs in Colombia, it creates even more in America. From airline staff to truck drivers to florists, over 200,000 people are employed in industries related to these imported flowers. This rose isn't just an expression of love, it's a symbol of globalization. Demand for a product in one country generates whole industries, technologies, processes, and employment in another. The part of the rose that we remember is the giving and the receiving. But those are just the simplest, easiest steps in the global chain that got it there. But everything that came before it is a function of a globalized world. Es una locura San Valentín, el, el movimiento de las flores en los supermercados, en las floristerías, la tradición. Es, eh, uno, uno desde acá no se puede imaginar cómo es ese movimiento. Es, eh, Roses travel far for Valentine's Day, but for couples who cannot travel to get married, there are proxy marriages. Click over here to attend a Montana wedding.